Good evening, Charnet, and welcome to Global TV. Good evening, Wayne. Thank you. Good evening, audience. Um, thank you for having me. How are um, you doing? I am I am doing good. I'm doing much better, um, to be honest. Um when this first happened, I took it really, really hard. Um because the fact is that I was not even aware of the fact that it was happening mm -hmm. until I got off the plane at Pearson and my phone blew up the Saturday night and I was getting texts and calls and people were telling me what was happening. So while that was happening, I was still in Jamaica, but because I was not listening to the show, I did not know what was happening. But Are you hearing me? Get into that. Are you hearing me clearly? We are hearing you clearly. Okay. Before we get into that, tell the audience, for those who may not have known you or were not watching Partner Draw TV, who sharing it is. Okay, so I am a Jamaican born, raised in the countryside. So I'm a country girl. Left Jamaica as a teenager, migrated with my, my mom, sponsored me to Canada. So I've been here, finished high school here, all that stuff. Out of all my siblings, I'm the oldest. So I kind of grew up with my grandparent and my grandfather was very knowledgeable in world affairs, politics, science. He was like beyond his time in terms of his knowledge and the vast knowledge. Being the oldest and being a girl, the oldest grandchild and being a girl and my mom and dad migrated, you know, you take on the responsibility of taking care of your siblings. It doesn't matter how much older you are. Um, than they were. So I matured real quickly and had to be smart and had to grow up and had to do things. So I learned a lot of stuff, but I, when I migrated here, I decided that I love Jamaica and I did not want to get rid of my roots. I wanted to stay close to my roots. And to be honest, out of all my six siblings, I'm the only one that goes back to Jamaica and it keeps in touch with anyone in Jamaica beside my mom. Um, I'm the only one that goes there. If you bring any of my siblings to Jamaica, they would not know east from west, north from south. So I kept in touch because I wanted to move back to Jamaica and I was interested in the country and providing jobs and economical resources and, and um, knowledge on um, finance and stuff like that. I always keep to myself abreast of what was going on in the country wanted to buy a piece of land, wanted to develop it, wanted to do a lot of stuff. And I did not like what was happening in the country. So that is basically how I kept in touch with Jamaica and why I kept in touch with Jamaica. And when my grandfather was alive, I went there as much as possible. Even, even when my grandfather migrated here, I continued to go back. Even now that they've all passed away, I still go to their grave, like almost every year, year and a half, I will go to the grave, I will sit there, I will speak to them. So that's basically the connection. And I have this thing, this thing that, that just draws me to Jamaica, this, this love thing I have with Jamaica. However, I don't like the way in which the country is going. And, and I'm, I've always said I'm neither PNP or GLP. Um, for the people, Jamaicans, because I want to be able to come back, not having my door kicked off, being able to live, being able to do business just like the Chinese does without any reprisal and without living in fear. So that's basically why I keep in touch with Jamaica. I do local charities out of my own pocket. A lot of stuff I do in Jamaica, but I've yeah. never, I've always shied away from social media and from the camera. So I've always been behind scene until I bumped into Andre's show by another blogger I, that mentioned I, I, Andre. I want to answer this question. How did you come across Partner Draw TV and when did you start watching Partner Draw? So um, I came across Partner Draw TV one night when I was watching another blogger. She was on and she was talking about a young lady named Donna Lee. And mm -hmm. it was very interesting. And she said, Andre came out the night before and spoke about it. I had no clue who Andre was. So the link that she had, I followed the link. It didn't take me much place. I started Googling the name and reading the comment section, found Andre's channel. And shortly after, after maybe about two or three days after Donnelly's situation, I started watching. So that's how I, um, I found out about it. 
I never commented because I don't or called in in the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. But as time um, went by and the issues he was covering and the way in which he was covering them, they it was great to me. That was like my, that, that was like down my field. That was perfect. So I kept listening. I get more concerned. I start tuning in. And then I called him the first time, um, nervously spoken to him. That's the first time I've ever called into a program, period. By the second time I called in, I guess Andre was impressed or something, but I later found out that he stored my information because weeks later when I called in, he addressed me by my name, which I never told him my name or gave him my number. But somehow, I guess when I called and WhatsApp, my information must have stored because while I was there, I heard him saying, Shernet was calling. Now there are many people called Shernet, so I did not know it was me because I was watching the program, not knowing it was me. Later on, he rang me back and I realized it was me. And I would call in at that time from time to time and um, just calling from time to time. Um, the listening audience, I guess, loved my point of view uh, for the most part. And basically that's how I, um, I, 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 I knew about the program because I did not know anything about Andre. You became the head girl for Padna Draw TV. But before explaining to us how you became the head girl for Padna Draw TV, explain leading up into that what cemented your attraction to the program that you have that gravitas to the program to the point where you became head girl for Padna Draw TV. What actually cemented it was the dedication. Here you are in England, you're not being paid. Everyone knows that you were not being paid. You were volunteering your time. Here is Andre at the time was not being paid. It's the something that was in Andre that was bold. He was bold as if he was knowing how dangerous Jamaica was. It's that boldness that I like because I don't like people that just talk. I like action. I always said I would be a nanny any minute. So I liked that about him, that unwavering spirit, places that other people would, would shy away from. He went there. That attracted me. Mm -hmm. that, the, the dedication of the people that were on his program, the information at that time that he was claiming that he was getting. I was wondering, how was he able to get these information? Who was he getting these information from? Then finding out out i didn't care anything about his background whatever his orientation is has nothing to do with me he mm -hmm. seemed at that time to sell us a story that he wanted a better jamaica right for Which jamaicans to. yeah jamaica for jamaicans that's basically jamaica for jamaicans and that's what i was about i don't care i've never voted in my life in jamaica because i left jamaica because before i was able to vote so it's Jamaica for Jamaicans. And that's what he seemed to stand for and wanted change, an immediate change. So that's when I basically said, hmm. And that held me. The fact he was on time every night, the fact that he was speaking a language that the people wanted to hear because we were almost to the point where we we're hopeless. So he again was playing, <laughs> I call it, he was playing, as he said, playing a li little David. So he was playing a little David. So uh, I thought Andre was, as he said, little David, he would play the song little David, but it looked as if little David was playing us. So at that time, I thought he was actually playing little David. I had no clue little David was actually playing us. So that's why I gravitated to it, because it was a form of hope for us that were desperate. And I think us in the diaspora, we gravitated to it more because people don't understand. It doesn't matter how much citizenship they give us so living overseas. And even if you came here at one, two, three, four, five years old, there's always this natural inclination to go home. There's nowhere like home to me. So for us in the diaspora, we always want to go home. So with him, we supported him a lot because we wanted, we were buying what he was selling because what he was selling is what we wanted. And how did you become the head girl? Well, in the comment section, 
they started calling me the head girl um, because of what I brought to the table. Um, it took uh, months for Andre to officially start calling me the head girl. Um, none of that stuff really mattered to me because as I stated before, I was about legacy for the next generation, not immediacy. Because mm -hmm. we as Blacks, we tend to think about immediacy, the now, but I was about legacy for my children and their grandchildren if they wanted to migrate to get a piece of the land of wood and water. So basically, the, uh, it, they start calling me that in the comment section. Then months later, Andre referred, start referring to me as the head girl. And um, I just wanted a better Jamaica for Jamaicans. And I would basically almost stop at nothing to see that happen. So that's how I got, I, I was, um, they started calling me the head girl. So it was the, it was the students as we would call ourselves that started calling me the head girl. And then later on, Andre started calling me the head girl. Right. Outside of the program, one would talk that, Shernet and Andre has a very good relationship. Outside of the program, do you have a communication with Andre prior to the 11th of August? Prior to the 11th of August, yes. Prior to the 11th of August, we had communication. However, when I started the program, when Donna Lee, that would have been August of this year, you're referring to Wayne, just for clarification? Yes, uh, August of this year. Yeah, so when Donnelly disappeared, I think it was August of last year. Mm -hmm. So when I started watching the program, there was no communication between Andre and I when I was, even when I was calling in. And I would read the comment section and people were saying, oh, Andre is telling her what to say. No, there was basically no communication. We would not communicate outside the show. During the show, sometimes Andre would send me messages. So but while he was live, he would send me messages. Sometimes um, he would send me messages calling Shernet. But outside the show, the day-to-day -day operation of the show, in the beginning, no, there was zero communication. Mm -hmm. There was nothing happening. I would sometimes be home, tired, just getting home from work, because 8 o'clock Jamaican time is... Um, it would be um, so eight o'clock Jamaican time would be nine o'clock here if we're on daylight savings time. But when we are on Eastern Standard Time, eight is eight. I'm just leaving work at eight. So most time I would watch, listen to the show, or watch the show in my vehicle driving home until I get home. So being busy at work, doing 10 hours, running my own business, I had no time for communication with Andre during daytime. Most times I would listen to the topic coming home. I would scratch little notes that if I get a chance to call in, these are some of the issues I want to address. So no, there was no communication between Andre and I, um, after which uh, he would send me, as I said, occasionally, occasion WhatsApp message. But if the topic was something I was not well versed on, I would just say to him, Andre, no, not tonight. I would not call in because I don't like to speak on things I have no knowledge of. Mm -hmm. And at any point, did the communication change? Did it get closer? Like both of, did both of you have telephone conversation on a regular basis? or not at all, or are you a part of any WhatsApp group that Andre has created? I, I was not, we were still not having regular conversations, um, not a telephone kind of a person other than when I call in. However, we did communicate. So in October, um, Thanksgiving, um, this is a Canadian Thanksgiving I'm referring to. Um, our Thanksgiving is in, um, in October. The weekend of Thanksgiving, again, Andre never asked me, but Andre was talking about the Canadian farm workers and the conditions they were living in. So I took it upon myself to fill my car with groceries and a bunch of stuff, my trunk and whatever. And I took off by myself, driving to some of the farms that they were mentioning. And I researched them because I'm a facts-based person. I'm the type of person, if you give me information, I need to prove that that actually is factual. So I took off, went driving. I drove about four hours 
At first I thought it was about three hours, four hours one way. Got to the farm. When I got to the farm, I found some farmers. The Monday would have been a statutory holiday here in Canada. So based on the law, the farmers would not be work, should not be working. And if they were working, they would have to be paid over time. I got to the point where my GPS was not even working anymore. And I start asking direction, lonely back road in the middle of nowhere and me just driving by myself. They directed me until I found one of the farm. While driving along the side of the street, I saw all these black men just working and it was raining. It was extremely cold because it was about 10 degrees difference between where I lived and where I ended up. I beckoned to them, pulled over, and a few of them nervously came over and started talking to me. I asked permission to record them. They were very, very nervous. But I told them, no, 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 I'm not recording your face. I'll just record your body and what you were saying. The farm owners were there. So I, I guess a lot of them started saying, no, 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 no. We don't want any trouble because if, if, if things were to occur, they would send us home and nobody would, like we would not come back. I said to them, no, 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 I would not. I started asking them, do you know about Andre Stevens? They said, no. They asked me, how are you, are you the one that's here to help us? Are we the, are you one of the new liaison officer? I said, no, I'm just a concerned citizen. And we spoke. And I, um, at that farm, I was not able to drop anything off because they were physically on the job. Um, another gentleman walked over and said, no, continue talking. I'll just go back and tell them that you're one of the liaison officer. So I interviewed them and they directed me to where other farms were. Those mm -hmm. footage of the interview, I later sent to Andre. So Andre had footage of those interviews that I sent to him. Put it, and I found, I think I went to about five or six separate farms that day. I actually was in one of the farms. The place was so massive. I was like, what if somebody starts shooting? Because I'm in the middle of nowhere. Did Just Andre ever disclose that in public? I'm sorry? Did Andre ever disclose that in public? No, because I even had the name of a lawyer that was been that has been was working with Andre for about 10 years. Sorry, working with the farmers for about 10 years. And she was willing to come on and do an interview. When I told Andre about it and sent the information to Andre, it's no, he never no, he never he never proceeded to do anything about it. It just kind of died down and I didn't follow I followed up on it about twice, but I just basically just left it because it did not Why seem to be something. He was Why interested do you think in. He might not want to run such a story. The hype. He did not have the hype because he went back and talked about the farmers twice after that. But he did not have the hype. He did not have the hype to grab the audience. He, he wanted stories that were much more catching, stories that would drag people's hearts, stories that he basically could grab numbers. So I don't mm -hmm. think he thought this one was going to give him the numbers he wanted. So he just buried it. There were some times when you would be absent from the show and we would hear Andre asking Shernet to call or Andre would be saying to the audience that Shernet is busy or creating some narrative. What really happened within those times? Well, one of the first um, incident I could remember, it was in the Black History, so Black History uh, Month. Um, I was part of the Black History Month um, celebration at my church, and I was supposed to do a presentation, which was pre-planned months in advance. Um, Andre asked me to come on his show and to do a live with him. Um, however, that Friday night, Andre said he was not feeling well, so the show was canceled. He then rescheduled it for the Sunday night. However, I had prior engagement at the church that I was supposed to speak. So I told him, Andre, I will try my best to finish the speaking engagement early, and then I would take part in the I think Karen was her name was going to be on and few other people and I would come on the show. So he wanted, he started sending me messages while I was at the church, leave the church, leave the engagement. You need to show up at the show, show up now. And I'm like, Andre, no, I cannot leave. He's like, I'm demanding you to leave now. Listen to me, leave now. I need you here. And I'm like, Andre, I can't just walk out. This is a speaking engagement I had for months. And I cannot until it's finished. So by the time the night was over, 
And I got home, the insults, the cussing that I got in my inbox, I called Andre and set him straight and said, like, and I never called in for about maybe, for about maybe two weeks. I stopped calling in. So when Andre was saying to people, oh, sure, I don't know where she is. No, he knew Prior what had happened. That incident, has he ever spoken to you in a disrespectful manner? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So a few months later, Andre, um, a create, like Andre created like a top um, student group. So the top student group on, that Andre um, created, it was um, a group that basically we were to communicate in. And Andre, oh yeah, when I would not follow his narrative, oh yeah, oh yeah. But before that, one night I was um, on my way coming home from work. Um, basically, I just got home from work. When I got home from work, um, Andre had sent me messages. And in the messages, Andre said to me, because he was doing an, int I guess I don't know what went wrong with Andre and Shelly Caron. So Andre started sending me messages, and in the messages, Andre said in the messages, sure, net, I want you to come out and cuss out Shelly Karan. So that's one of the nights he sent me a message, said I should come out and cuss out Shelly Karan. So I sent him back a note and said, no, I don't know Shelly. I know nothing about Shelly. Shelly has done nothing to me, and I refuse to come out and cuss Shelly out i will not do that so he basically tried to control that narrative by saying i should come out and cast shelly so i declined have you ever asked to do the same thing to queen africa oh yes so one night he was the night he was doing the 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 the, the show with queen africa he was on i did not like the way the interview was going i sent him he was he because listen to this, Andre said he, Andre, suffers from mental illness. Queen Africa suffers from mental illness, according to Andre. If Queen Africa suffers from mental illness and you suffer from the same mental illness, I expect you to show empathy to her. I know nothing about Queen Africa. I don't even know one of her songs, to be honest. So he was there the night. The way in which he started speaking with her in the interview turned. I sent him the message and said, Andre, end the interview or check yourself because it does not sound professional. I said, remember, you're on an international stage. So he said to me, sure, Annette, I come in while you come out and done the girl. But yet you're telling me to take it easy on her. So I said, no, Andre, I would not come out and cuss the woman out. I declined and told him I could not do that. First thing first, she's a female. She has done nothing to best of my knowledge. And secondly, without cause, I will not, you cannot manipulate me to come out and just start cussing out people. So I declined. So I later on, as soon as Andre hung up that phone, Andre told me some Plot. Listen, I never knew Andre could swear. Andre called me back. 